young you know the veteran guys and then there's uh, players who have been there and uh, been around that place more than anybody the Jacks and Tom Watsons and Arnold that's the great thing about Augusta being a champion struck it nicely oh Canada Welcome to Queens on the Green here at Augusta Jam in the PGD Global Virtual Clubhouse. Today we will be celebrating golf at its best with our 2003 Masters champion and Canadian legend, Mike Weir, and his better half, the beautiful stylist, actress, and reality TV star, Michelle Money. Let's give it up for Michelle and Mike. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Oh my gosh. We're excited. We're so excited. And of course, you know, we have to, this is very rare because normally in golf, you know, Canadians are the minority. Today on this golf call, we are the majority um, and we are so excited. Um, so we definitely want to dive into the whole masters and how you guys are getting ready. But we do want to, you know, we have a lot of Canadian viewers today. We're, we're partners with Golf Canada, Canadian Junior Golf Association. Seema and I were the first junior girls on the Canadian Junior Golf Association. We played in two World Cups, two national teams. We played on probably uh, every Ontario provincial team. And, you know, we realized the value of the game of golf in Canada. Um, and we would love for you to just share with us, Mike, a little bit about how you picked up the game in Canada um, and some of the good memories that you have. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough, um, I guess I was about 10 or 11 years old. We moved across the street from Huron Oaks Golf Club and just outside of Sarnia and Brights Grove. So I, I rode my bike across the street, asked to get a summer job there, working the driving range, working the back shop, um, and I was hired. So that my dad had introduced me to the game at about seven years old, but we only played a couple times in the summer. It was mostly baseball. But when we moved across the street from this course and I got the summer job with that game access to the golf course. So when I wasn't working my shift, I was able to practice and and play a lot. So that was kind of my early introduction to the game. And, and I fell in love with the game. You know, I think, you know, I had at that time, there was probably seven or eight really good juniors that we were all working the shifts or, or playing golf. So there was a good group of guys that we were uh, all kind of in it together you know, working and going in and getting a milkshake, and getting French fries and then going back on the course. And, you know, it was great. It was a great, great life as, as a young kid to do that, to have a job and also uh, play this great game. Where were you getting milkshakes at? That's what I want to know. At, at the golf club, at the golf club. We were getting them right there. We'd go inside and get French fries. And, uh, you know, as you know, in Canada, French fries with poutine with some gravy and, you know, just went to so town good. with the milkshake. Yeah, so good. So, um, that's that was kind of like my summers as a kid all the way till I was 18, you know, working, working at the club um, and playing golf and just kind of honing my craft. And um, the other sports started going by the wayside as I got into my later teens and started focusing more just on golf and lucky enough to get a college scholarship to BYU. And that's why I'm here in Utah. There, there was a lot more men's golf going on in Canada. Hmm. Um, we were fortunate enough the CN um, Canadian Women's Tour evolved and we were able to play professionally on the CN Canadian Women's Tour. Tell us about how you were able to compete in Canada. What what sort of tours were you able to compete and how did how did it just evolve, you know, your competitive side? Canadian Tour event when you were playing. Yeah, I mean, the Canadian Tour started, you know, for me after, after college, but the junior days were just the local junior tournaments. There was a small tour in Southwestern Ontario called the Tyson Tour that enveloped you know from London to Sarnia all the courses around there Windsor so there was a small tour in the summer called the Tyson tour that uh, all of us juniors played 
Um, and then if you played well enough, obviously in on Ontario events, you get into the Ontario junior and um, hopefully the Canadian junior and those kind of things if you played well. So that's kind of, that was my junior days playing those. Um, I probably not until I was in college, did I make any real teams? Um, I did make uh, an Ontario Wellington cup team. That's not true. I did play a team event. We played Ontario Quebec matches. I made a team when I was 15, we, we got to go to Quebec city and play um, against uh, some of the top Quebec juniors, but there weren't a lot of teams happening. I mean, until I was in college and playing in, in the Ontario amateur and things like that. And, and you finished in the top four, you made the Wellington cup team and you got to play the Canadian amateur and those kind of things. So that was kind of fun. Uh, very fun. And met some good friends still today, still close with a lot of those guys, Bill Hutchison, my good buddy, Jeff Kramer, who actually came to BYU with me that I met through the Canadian amateur. And so a lot of connections there from, from junior and amateur golf. I just want to throw it out there that, I'm a running rebel, UNLV, where I think we're in this uh, Mountain West conference, that's, right? That's right. And your golf team is pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. yeah. yeah. He's always been good. And UNLV started coming on, you know, kind of in my, my last couple of years of, of college golf. So in the, in the early nineties, <laughs> a long yeah. time ago, but that's when they started getting pretty good. Coach Dwayne Knight on the men's side went he's from, uh, is he still there? Still here. He has not given this position up. Okay, so he was, he was at New Mexico my first couple of years, and uh, now, yeah, he's still going at UNLV, so he's built a nice program there. In honor of you being here, like, literally, we we haven't really left the house. Because of that, we haven't been able to carry we out of our house. Course. We leave in, like, shitty totes. Like, we've got, like, COVID oh. bags, you know? <laughs> so we don't really... Yeah, we can't carry anything fancy, so... We do have some fancy purses that we we brought for you. For you. Oh, look at that! My, where did you find <laughs> this? These literally have your name all over them. We were laughing. Like, <laughs> that, that ridiculous! Is. Like that is. I have to have it. Best last name ever. <laughs> so yeah. funny. Yes. I know. It's a great last name. It's my ex-husband's last name and my daughter's last name. Yep. <laughs> But you know, yeah. we will still send you a fun money purse. Right? Like when you're walking the side li lines, you, know, you need to be, you know, golf. That is so <laughs> yeah. amazing. I think your daughter it. would steal that. Yeah, my daughter would, Brielle would steal that for She's sure. She's totally stealing yeah. that for me. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, Michelle, I know that you're picking up the game of golf, right? Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your golf game. What is Mike teaching you? What kind of tips is he giving you? And how are you enjoying the game? Well, so Mike and I had been dating now for almost five years. And so the first, I guess, four years, it was like, I wasn't interested at all. And for whatever reason, I had a friend who was like, Hey, let's go golfing. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Mike had bought me clubs. So I'm like, I need to figure out how to use them. Um, and so I just started, I started golfing with a friend and then I was like, I need to take some lessons. And, you know, it's so funny because Mike will, give me great tips and like break things down for me. But it's like, wait, I don't understand that. Like I need someone to dumb it down for me. So I ended up working <laughs> with this yeah. amazing um, coach over at, uh, at Willow. Willow Creek. Yeah. Lindsay. Lindsay. Mm -hmm. she, and she was just perfect. She made it, she made it really easy to digest. And so I had some good groundwork laid out from Lindsay and now I'm kind of getting to where this stuff that Mike will kind of like coach me on is starting to kind of make sense. <laughs> so I realized that, you know, you kind of have to have, for me at least, I needed someone who could really dumb it down. Yeah, so they really man up with, for sure. There's well, a lot, like fundamentally, there's a lot to the game of golf. So yeah, speaking well, like- Yeah, and it's been so funny because the only golf I've really ever seen is, is watching Mike play. And so when I finally like went and played 18 holes, it was like, oh, you guys are- really bad golfers like this takes a long time like the people I played with it was like this is what I'm used to like right. and, so, and then I would kind of beat myself up I'm like I'm not doing it right I'm not moving fast enough I'm not you know because all I had experienced was Mike's level of golf so mm -hmm. I've had to really kind of break it down and stop beating myself up and one of the best things that Mike did for for me is he sent me to Phoenix um mm -hmm. to do a lesson with Pia and Lynn there mm -hmm. yeah vision, yes vision, vision 54, 54. Mm -hmm. and it was such great like foundation work for for the game of golf especially not get, not having any experience with it because it's all about 
your mindset and kind of your thought process and just your attitude about the game. So I feel like that was such a great experience. I did it with my mom and we both got a ton out of it and it's helped me kind of just enjoy the game and let it be what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to, I want to ask you to fashion. Can we talk a bit? I mean, golf fashion, we struggle. It's, it's hard. It's, It's hard. Like we, so golf has made a transition from a game to a sport. Um, yeah. And now we're a sport, our apparel really hasn't evolved. So share with us some of the things that you're wearing on the golf course. What are some of your favorite designers? What are your trends? So I found that I think the biggest key is find the right length that's flattering on your legs. And mm-hmm. the problem with my legs is that kind of traditional cutoff level, like right above the knee is so hideous on me. It looks so bad. Yeah, so, it's for you. Yeah, it's just like yeah. a very awkward length on me so when I up in the center when you're walking yeah, and, the it's, it's people nothing. <laughs> and you're like yeah. wait am I camel towing right now this is <laughs> awkward <laughs> yeah the things are so weird so I will usually wear either like a lululemon tennis skirt that it's like those cute short ones because that's more flattering on my legs or I'll wear just like golf pants but mm-hmm. that in between length is just like wow it's not flattering So you have to figure out what works for you. And there's certain occasions where it's like, no one cares. It's hot. I'm not going to put pants on. I'm going to wear, like we went to the vintage club and it was like, you know, you have to have this, you know, skirt or shorts to the mm -hmm. knee and you're just like, and it's so hot in Palm Springs. So you're like, whatever. I, I, I think the brands I really loved, um, I love Tori sport, um, Tori Birch, her line of of sports stuff. And then, um, you like the G4 stuff. I love G4. Was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like gloves. Gloves. yeah. Yes. We mm-hmm. wear, we really like the Asher golf gloves. They're a local mm-hmm. um, brand that has been really awesome. They have some fun designs. But a cool lot, designs. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of times I'll just find um, stuff out like Lululemon and Athleta mm-hmm. and, um, and then just find cute little collared sleeveless tops. Yeah. Have um, you, have you helped Mike with his golf outfits like is there a morning yeah. you're like, oh, honey no I'm gonna put you in this Listen, Mike, <laughs> Mike is has. very lucky that he works with a perfect line of clothing he works with Hugo Boss which I think is like made for Mike's body because it's just like fitted and like classic and it, it looks so good on him that I really don't ever even have to worry as long as it's like sometimes put in together right yeah sometimes it's like which pants do I wear but and um, yeah, you're good. No, help me with that. No, you're a natural. And I think working with Hugo Boss makes it really easy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're literally Canada's icon for golf. So. <laughs> That's nice. So, you that you go back. Are all your outfits ready for the masters? Both of you. Tell us what's going on. Okay. This is a very important question. You go first. I'm, I'm far behind. So <laughs> shirts have come in, sweaters, pants came in, didn't fit. Oh no. Um, so yeah. we're in a rush to get them back because normally I have to get them altered, um, you know, lengthwise and waistwise. So I, I'm hoping they get here by the end of this week, early next week, so I can get them into the tailor so I can have them by the end of the following week before I leave. So a little scramble mode, but tops and sweaters and things I'm all good with. Love it. He always looks sharp. I, on the other hand, this is like the biggest stress okay. of the year for me. Um, no, it's really not. It's actually, after going so many years, you kind of understand there's kind of, there's the Augusta apparel for the, like mm-hmm. the, um, Wednesday part three. Yes. But for the okay. spectator, oh, right. Yeah. If you're a spectator and you're going and you're going to like kind of mingle and enjoy and sit and, and eat and kind of walk around, then you can like rock some really fun outfits mm-hmm. when you're walking and watching, you know, I'll be, I'm walking, you know, 18 holes every day, you really have to revolve it around your shoes. Cause I don't care how, like there's nothing worse than being so uncomfortable and trying to keep up and walk 18 holes at Augusta nonetheless Mm -hmm. and being uncomfortable. So you have to revolve the outfits around the shoes. So, and they have to be comfortable. So I've purchased some shoes. I have a few that I'm planning on. And then I've just, you kind of just go with like 
I just go with leggings, athleta leggings. I love their leggings. And then like, it depends on the weather. So you kind of have to plan on mm-hmm. you know, layers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nothing too far off of what I do at a normal, at any other tournament. However, the par three tournament is where I like to get dressed up and kind of get like a cute little dress and like mm-hmm. take a photo, but they're not doing the par three this year. So it's, um, right. yeah. Right. So that's more you time have to for everything there. I mean, Augusta could be, it could be 80 yeah. degrees. It could be 50 in April, right? I've played yeah. where you, 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 feel, you can't get warm enough. Totally. And other times where it's hot and muggy. So you just don't it's, know what you're going to yeah, get. Yeah, you, you just know? have to be prepared. Like mm-hmm. I remember back in, when was the Masters last time? November. November, mm-hmm. like two days before we left. I'm like, I need rain boots. Like it's going to be wet and you yeah. just kind of have to scramble at the last minute. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's fun. It is fun to to prep for the week. Oh yeah. And everybody's there at the masters. It's like so fun. It's a great networking time. You get to go out. You were mentioning that you have some, some green jacket dinners. I know you're rocking your new green jacket. Tell us a little about that. This is from Zara. Um, it was on sale for $69. And so I was like, <laughs> this is going to have to be a new addition. Oh, your so- favorite <laughs> <Yeah>. So much my- <laughs> in golf. These are my kind of girls. Um, so for me, yeah. Mike's friend throws a master's dinner party on the night that Mike goes and yeah. has the dinner with Tuesday nights, the yeah. champions dinner. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not at the house. We usually have a group of friends and family at, we rent one house and everybody gets together. And that's the one night I'm not there because I'm at the champions dinner. So they throw their own green champ, jacket, green jacket, champions dinner. Yeah. Kind of. so, so I needed to upgrade uh, my new green jacket. Are we, are we invited? I feel like, yes. Like, yeah. I feel like, I feel totally. like you definitely right. are invited. Totally. Even if you we were not first, you bring that little money clutch and you're in now. I'll tell you what, even if we weren't invited, we would crash the party. I love yeah. that. <laughs> and we'll get you the address for sure. <laughs> we are so dying to know, right? Um, and I think, you know, the world just wants to know always about the dinner, right? So let's rewind back to 2003. Let's talk about what you chose for dinner, right? In 2004, obviously. Yep. But tell us about that experience. What's the cutlery like? What are the napkins like? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, is it open bar? bar like? like, are my martini glasses mini and, and <laughs> are they big and full? <laughs> right. So here's the difference between us. <laughs> <laughs> he has a guy I'm looking what kind of beer are you serving what kind of tequila I'm not looking at the glasses I'm looking at what, what they're actually, what's serving. actually in the glass what's in the glass no but seriously my my good friend Alistair Mackay who I grew up with from the time I was probably five years old is a chef in Sarnia in my hometown so once I won the masters and knew I was going to have to put the the dinner together I called Alistair right away and I said Alistair you know I want to do a Canadian themed dinner um let's put something together so after some back and forth, we came up with, uh, he had originally wanted to serve moose. Oh, wow. Yeah. He wanted to serve moose really? and there was just, he, like, oh, no, he, couldn't, he couldn't pull it off. So we went, we, we went with elk and he served oh, elk, which is which amazing. We elk? Yeah. We had elk at the dinner. Moose. Well, yeah. You I can. didn't know. Okay. But yeah. I'm Canadian and Michelle, I can't even like align with that. No. <laughs> Like I've never even heard of that before. That's yeah. a hard no. I would hear in the West, even in Utah, and like when you live out in the West, there's elk on a lot of menus when you go out to restaurants. Um, okay. I've never seen moose, but elk you see quite often. And it's really good when it's done rare with, you know, this blueberry sauce and it's, it's really good. Um, but we also had like salmon from West Coast, BC appetizer. So there's like a cocktail little hour before you go in for dinner. So there's like a mingling and everybody going around. So they, so like to have a lot of appetizers and things out. So we had, you know, mussels from PEI. We had smoked salmon from British Columbia. Um, the dinner was elk, but he had potatoes from, from out East as well. And he had, he, he had, you know, a bunch of different things, berries from so, uh, Southwestern Ontario. And it was a total Canadian theme, wines and beers and everything was, was all Canadian. So it was pretty cool to put that all together. And um, you know, when you're, when you're hosting the dinner, you sit at the, who, who the chairman of the dinner is. And that, that year it was Byron Nelson was kind of the host. And I sat between Byron Nelson and Tom Watson at the head of the table. So it was really cool to kind of sit with those two guys and hear the stories because Byron mentored Tom Watson. 
And then after dinner was over, he, Byron kept saying, what a great dinner. This is so great. And uh, what a great dinner. And he's like, how'd you put this all together? And I told him about Alistair. And I said, in fact, Alistair's here down in the kitchen. He, you know, Augusta was nice enough to have Alistair come in and kind of prepare everything. So it was really cool. I was, you know, a childhood friend to come in. And then Mr. Nelson asked Alistair to come upstairs and everybody was like, kind of gave him a little mini standing ovation for the dinner and stuff. So it was a really cool experience. That whole dinner was really cool because a good friend got to really did put it together. That's amazing. Just champions, right? No one, no one else is there. The chairman, the chairman of the club and, okay. and just, and the champions, that's it. So who do you sit beside? Well, now. It kind of changes, it changes year to year, but I seem to have kind of fallen into a little group of right down by Gary player and Adam Scott and VJ Singh and Nick Faldo's right by us. And, uh, who else? Charles Cootie is right by us. Um, so that seems to be our little group. Um, this last November was different because we we got spread out to a big room because of COVID and they had us really spread out. It, it, it was a bit awkward because it wasn't the normal routine of one big table. So we were all kind of spread out. So I sat right across from Phil Mickelson, he and I, and then Adam Scott and Trevor Rimmelman were just down and, you know, six, eight feet apart. So it was a little bit different. Um, and, you know, I've known Phil a long time. We're the same age lefties. Obviously we played college golf against one another and we've known each other a long time. So it was good to catch up with him too. That's a it was a memorable moment to watch you put the jacket on Phil Nicholson and have Tiger put it on you. Right. Mm -hmm. I figured it was pretty easy for you and Phil to sit next to each other because they can just put your cutlery on the appropriate side. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mike, your most memorable moment at the masters, like a specific moment. And then the most memorable moment you've had at the Canadian open. Um, most memorable moment. If I, okay, I'll just, I'll break it down to on the golf course. I'll say the most memorable moment on the golf course at Augusta was making that putt on the 72nd hole mm. uh, to get into the playoff because it's, it's all or nothing. That putt is all or nothing. It's dead silent. It's the most, pressure packed you can get and to knock it right in the middle is something I'll always remember. Mm. Um, my most memorable Canadian open experience is probably playing the Canadian open as masters champion in 2003, later that summer and going to the first tee at Hamilton golf club. And it was, I don't know how many people deep, but it was, it was a huge crowd on that first tee and whoever was announcing said, you know, on the tee from Ontario, Canada, master's champion and the crowd was just it took a while before i could tee off i mean the, it was just incredible i'll never forget that like what you've done for golf in canada is so important i mean there, there's been a lot of great canadian golfers you know um we we i just remember our dad taking us when we were really really young um to Glen abbey mm -hmm. and you know he was like we're gonna go to the golf course and we're gonna watch and so we're like okay you know we didn't know any better and and you know, he would tell us, he's like, you know, see that man over there? We're like, yeah. He's like, that's Jeff Sluman. We're like, cool. Okay. You know, we were this. <laughs> all we wanted to do is dress up and be, you know, fun. But yeah. like, he put us in pleated khakis, oversized golf shirts. And I love you, Dad, because I know he's going to be so excited about this segment. But like, he really, you know, you, you were a unifier for our family when it came to you know, going out and watching Canadian Opens. Like we would follow you when we were little. Um, we still follow you, but when you emerged onto the scene, it was like, you know, you, you really made a roar immediately. But, you know, I think, I think people don't realize how much golf, how big golf is in Canada. Like- Yeah, that's true. Our, and, and we were just, we were having a conversation with um, a, a gentleman that actually ran the Canadian Women's Tour 20 years ago and now he has his own business his name's Jeff Dykeman he really made Canadian junior and amateur golf they did such a great job of the way they ran the tournaments from the signage to the branding you know we really really take a lot of pride in Canada and in around the game and it's just something that you know I think that's why we have a lot of great golf coming out of Canada but you yep. really set that bar well thanks I agree I mean with with your sentiment about you know, just the, the popularity of the sport. I mean, we love our golf in Canada. We think it people, a lot of people outside of Canada think it, uh, if it is a, just a hockey nation, right. Uh, sport wise, 
but we love our golf. I mean, that's, I think, the highest participation rate per capita in the world. The wow. number of people uh, wow. play to uh, our population. So that just shows how popular it is in Canada. So, wow. yeah. In general, you know, 92, 93 World Series champions. Mm-hmm. What's up? Mm-hmm. Um, 2019 NBA, uh, yeah, NBA Raptors champions. Yeah. Got a Masters champion. I mean, we're killing it. <laughs> totally. Um, we have to dive into this because we're so excited. How did you two lovebirds meet? We definitely want to know. Um, tell it us. Actually, it actually was five years ago yesterday yeah. when we were actually. I was out at a restaurant. Mike was just leaving a restaurant, and as I was walking in, he was walking out. And he saw me and, and the friends that he happened to be with knew who I was. And so he's like, who is that girl? Yeah. They said, that's Michelle Money. And he said, who's Michelle Money? I want to know her. So long story short, they connected um, us um, through a mutual friend. And we went out like a month or so later. Yeah. It was at least maybe yeah five or six weeks till we could finally yeah. coordinate schedules. and Yeah. Uh, and then it was just kind of like like this perfect, healthy, like progression of a relationship, just kind of slow and steady. And Mm -hmm. yeah, we just kind of started hanging out and never stopped. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) And so can you describe like your romantic days? Like what, what do you guys do during COVID? How do you guys kind of keep things romantic? Well, we're, the good thing is we're both we love being home. We are homebodies. Yeah. Um, it could be as simple as me making dinner, we, we play some, uh, some games. We, we love to play table games, board games. We'll do that. If I think of just things we do around the house, but r- romantic things, I mean, it could be as simple as me making dinner, having a glass of wine, sitting outside, enjoying the backyard. Um, we have a little fire pit in the back and a little couch. We could just sit on the couch in the back with the glass of wine and with the sun setting. It's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. We have a really, we sit, we laugh like all the time. We're like, we just are sweet, just have such a healthy, great relationship. Like mm-hmm. we can do anything together. I've never gotten sick of him, not once. And we just, we were very um, compatible. So in any situation, in any place, we just have fun and enjoy each other. So I don't know. I think like every day is, I mean, Mike brings me coffee in bed every morning, every morning. That is Mike- so My daughter tried to bring me coffee in bed the other day. And I was like, this is BS. This is not your job. This is, and it was just like, you were mad. I was mad. I was like, I don't like that. My coffee should come from you. Cause then I get a kiss. No, No. he spoils me. He spoils me. And he's, we just, I don't know. I think that we just lucked out with the timing in our lives Mm. where we both had just kind of been through prior relationships that didn't work out and you kind of you appreciate the little things I think when you've Mm -hmm. kind of you know gone through some hard times and I think we both really appreciate the little like the time we have together with our family playing games listening to music Mm -hmm. drinking wine and being in bed by 9 30 asleep by 10 is like (laughs) those things are the things we both love that's what we did a lot in COVID (laughs) yeah during the COVID time I mean we just hung out here with, with the girls and yeah. played some games and yeah. And I think we just, I mean, there's just a mutual respect and kindness that we have towards mm-hmm. one another and, and, and yeah, we just kind of get each other. And yeah. Play, you know? Yeah. I love that. You guys, you're talking to two single people. Yeah. I was about to say, I was like, we're like eating, we're like soaking <laughs> this off. We're like, <laughs> yeah. no. don't give up. Do not yeah. give up. Um, yeah. Nika brings me coffee in the morning. i'm good with that for now okay so you did mention cooking okay we gotta we gotta chat about canadian food okay and michelle if if you have ever eaten swiss chalet you'll know what i mean and harvey's sometimes they're connected they're connected they're restaurants have have i taken to harvey's yet what is Harvey's? I haven't been to Swiss LA in a long time, but usually I've when I'm home, I get a Harvey's. Harvey's is a burger place. Ooh, it's like a Harvey's. char boil, broiled, yummy. You get the sweet peppers on there. Ooh. You get the whole thing. It's so good. No better burger. Really? Yeah. 
and pickles. We're they connoisseurs have, too. We are burger, We're burger connoisseurs. connoisseurs. Yeah, we pride sure. ourselves in like. I can't believe that's my bad that I. Yeah, that taken is it. your bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, bad. we haven't been able to go to Canada for so long. It feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll get there and we'll go. We're gonna go. Make sure you remind Mike to upgrade your combo to the poutine because they're poutine. Okay. Okay. All it right. Totally. I love that. Totally. And Swiss Chalet. <laughs> and Swiss Chalet was my grandfather's like favorite restaurant. So, so what, what is that? that? Chicken place. It's like chicken. Ooh. It's like charbroiled chicken and yeah. fries and. And they yep. have gravy. Oh yeah, they're gravy. Okay. Yeah, they're dipping a dipping sauce. We like gravy. I don't know what it is, but we but need. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We do. I love it. And ketchup, and throw ketchup on top of it. Ooh, yeah. ketchup chips. Ketchup chips, though. <laughs> Yes. This up. We yeah, got me hooked on them, and then he was talking to a friend that lives in Canada, and he was like, "Oh, we just love the ketchup chips." So we got a package the other day. Bam. Yeah. What? Like, these are so delicious. And those yeah. are really ketchupy. Oh, those are President's Choice. President's Choice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at you just supporting Canadian brands now. No, they're not allowed to ship alcohol to Utah, but they're not, they're okay with ketchup yeah. chips. I know. Do you know, I was good. Get, get ketchup chips from Amazon and a bag is like $26. I would be willing to pay that. A friend of mine sent that to me. So if she, if she paid that much, I'll bless her. Yeah. No, Cause I did not pay for them. I'm a Humpty Dumpty. That's my ketchup chip brand. Oh, Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, I've never good. heard of that one. Mm -hmm. so in Canada, Michelle, we have all these of our own brands. Like we mm -hmm. had sellers and like Target tried to come in and Canada rejected Target. Who rejects Target, right? Canada. That's <laughs> epic. You know? Um, okay. We we have some games we want to play with you guys. Michelle loves games. Yeah, this is I love games. This will be your favorite. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you kind of know us, right? Like you kind yeah. of know five, so you can keep it 100. We're not going to be like offensive. Okay. All right. It's hard to offend us. Oh, oh yeah. Good. Because okay, good. it's hard to offend me as well. And same. Right. Just, same. Yeah. Thick skin. Thick yep. skin. <laughs> okay. So this game is called Who Would You Rather? Okay. And we are doing it couples edition Canadian style. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Who would you so rather? This one is fun and easy. Okay. okay. So if you had to eat at one place from here on out, we just talked about it, for the rest of your life, and then now you're going to have to introduce that to Michelle. She's got to eat it for the rest of her life. Swish LA or Tim Hortons? I'll go, I'll go Tim Hortons because we both are, we need our coffee we in need the morning. Our coffee. Mm. And you can get a sandwich. You can get a sandwich at Timmy's. Okay. You're going to get your donuts. You're I, do, get the I do love their coffee. Mm -hmm. And, and a little secret to, to Tim Hortons, they have badass chili. Really? Really? Oh, I yeah. swear they chop up mushrooms and put it in there because it is so like chewy and tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next time I'm there, try it. Who would you rather go on a double date with? Okay. 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 Number one, and you guys both have to, to you guys can, can pick whoever you want. Okay. So, but you have to finalize it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Picture. Okay. Discuss it like you were actually like getting ready and you had to make this real decision. Okay. okay. The coffee and stuff like that. Oh my okay. god. Who would you rather go on a double date with, Seema and Drake, or me and Brian Adams? Ooh. Okay. Hard one. Tough one, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Think it through. Take your time. Drake, though. I know. Adams, I've Brian. been on stage with Brian Adams. You have, Brian Adams that's is my right. guy. So you've already, have you ever met Drake? Well, I have not met Drake. I have never met either of them. Okay. So I feel like because you've already met Brian Adams, we choose Drake. No offense. None taken. Once again, hard to offend. So don't you what, think that's the correct answer? It'd be cool to meet Drake, but Brian's like my, one of my favorite artists Gosh, of all time. Dang it, Mike. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to like, yeah. That is we gotta tough. make. Do we gotta make a call? Yeah, yeah you got it. I'm gonna. I'll let Michelle make the call. I feel like it's Drake, you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. We going. Yeah, going. we going, girl. Hook we it going. up. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. Versus Save me from the heart. Oh gosh, that's so good though. I know when a hot line bling. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh my God, me and Drake and you guys, we would have so much fun. Niche. Good time. Summer of 69. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you can join us at dessert, you and Brian. We yeah, do- let's make, yeah. We're doing other things anyways, we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're out with Celine Dion anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be too. Okay, next one, 19th hole. I don't know, it's my favorite hole because yeah. that's my favorite cocktail. So who would you rather have a cocktail with, okay? At the 19th hole, Joe Carter, after hitting the 93 three run home run to the left field to win the World Series, or Kyle Lowry after the 2019 Raptors NBA championship? You don't know who either of these I don't are. know who either of these no. <laughs> There are legends. Well, they're like, they're yeah. like, oh and then there are legends. So have you met these two men? I've met Joe Carter before. Okay. Um, I haven't met Kyle, um, but Kyle's current. He's playing. Okay. For the for the Raptors. Okay, got it. And they won the championship in 2019. Ooh, yeah. yeah. But Joe Carter hit a home run to win the World Series, like a walk off home run to win the World Series, which is. Ooh, you know, ooh, it was I like the greatest Both thing. are golfers, by the way. Both are avid golfers. Ah, yeah, you know the I Joe at his charity golf tournament years ago. Okay. Wait, wait, Michelle. Yeah. Back to back by Drake. Yes. Yeah, back to back. He's back, talking yeah. to Joe Carter. Oh, so, no yeah. way. You know where Joe Carter's, the guy's jumping in a baseball? That's Joe Carter. After oh, cool. He, he won back to back. They won back to back championships. That's to have cool. a beer with, I hear Kyle's, yeah, he's into golf, loves golf. I've met Joe before. I haven't met Kyle. So I would say currently I'd like to have a beer with with Kyle in the 19th bowl and talk to him, talk some hoop, talk some golf. I think it'd be fun. Cool. We could probably arrange that here on Queens on the Green. Ooh, fun. Nice. And that leads us to join. Yeah. And that leads us to our next question, Michelle. Yeah. And I and I think, Mike, you should throw in, you know, a little bit of your- One more chip. Okay. Yeah. So, who would you rather style? Because we know michellemoney.com, go there. And it's so important, right, for a woman to feel good and look good, to go out into the world and, and do good. Who would you rather style if you were living in the late 90s? Okay. Ooh. Okay. 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 Halo or Mariah Carey? Oof. That's a hard one. Oh my gosh. In the late 90s? I mean, the current Michelle. I know who I'd rather style. Who? Who? J Lo. Yeah, I know. Girlfriend is hot. Yeah. I feel like the current Michelle would love to go back to the '90s, J Lo, and fill out her eyebrows a little bit more. Mm. But if we're just going back to that time frame, gosh, it's gonna be J Lo. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be J Lo. And while I'm back in the '90s with J Lo, mm-hmm. I'm gonna find out what she's eating, what she's, how she's working out, what skincare she's using, because she is currently so fine, looks so hot. And I need to be on whatever program she's on. And she's like my age, I think. I think she's like she's, 50, isn't she? She's 50, I think she turned 51. She went on like a 50 year and now she just turned 51. No. It would be JLo. The yeah. correct answer is JLo. Niche was JLo. Um, when was this? How many years ago? 90. He I went on a, a talk show as a J-Lo lookalike. Oh, um, yeah? Cool. What? Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys remember her. It's mm-hmm. uh, Ananda Lewis. And I used to be, like, super embarrassed about what I did, but... No, it's fun. It is. It is yeah. fun. But, you know, um, Ananda Lewis, she had a talk show, and it was, like, really popular at the time and I was like a junior in, in college. I went to University of Missouri, played golf there. And it was just like this whim opportunity. And and my one of my roommates was watching TV and like the Ananda Lewis, they're like, does your friend look like a celebrity? And so just for fun, my roommates like, yeah, my two roommates look like Britney Spears and JLo. So they flew us out to New York and I wore like the one piece jumpsuit. Remember how she wore that one piece jumpsuit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my love don't cost a thing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then I had the American flag and, you know, and I walked out like it was way too tight. We're going to need you to post some photos. We're going to yeah. need some evidence. We're going to need you to <laughs> find it anywhere. I would love to see that. That's amazing. I can see the resemblance. Totally. Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. That's so nice. Totally. You and JLo look alike. That's crazy. Cause they're like, you find me an A-Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Before we close out, we're going to do one thing. We are going to play a money game and it's a song game. So we all have to name a song that has money in it Ooh. and you sing the lyric. Mm-hmm. Who wants okay. to go? I'll go first. Okay. Not money, 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 money. That's it. I love it. Eddie Levert. Yes. The OJs. OJs. I'm still thinking. You you <laughs> girls go. I'm still thinking. I'll okay. go. I'll go next. Okay. I'll be getting to the money. Everybody, man. Yes. I'll be making too much money. Everybody, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's good. That to be your theme song. That's epic. For, yeah. For the I love it. The lyrics to that "No Money, More no Problems" oh. song, mm-hmm. like from. Um, Pop Daddy or P Diddy or with it is Biggie, right? More money, more problems. Let's yes, see. how's, remember how's that the one. rift on that one? How does it go? I have one stuck in my head that I'm going to share with you if you can't yeah. put it together. You do, Let's but go. I mean, I like that one. We got to pull that one up. Hey, must be the money. Let's together. If you want to go. Must be the money. That was awesome. We should just shut it down there. No, no. You don't get off the You don't get off the hook, sister. I have two now. Okay. 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 There's an Instagram influencer who is hilarious. His name is Dorelli Rell, and he used to work at Honda, okay? okay. And he's selling so many cars at Honda that he created this song where he got out of the Honda and he was like, where the money reside, where the money reside, where the money reside. Because <laughs> <laughs> that day he sold like, I think like four cars on the line. That is amazing. That's good. That's but good. my song song to you, Michelle, would be Money Talks. Money talks. Yes. Money talks. I forgot who sings that. I don't know either, but I have heard that one. I've heard that one too. Yeah. Good. That you guys. That good. Great voices, everyone. Yeah. Except for no. me. What? No, everyone did such a great job. Thank you. <laughs> no, of course. And I think when we go to, you know, when we we're on our double date with Drake, we can pitch our voices to him. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Who knows what comes out of it? So we just want to really thank you for coming on Queens on the Green, sharing your love for the game. Um, Michelle, we wish you all the best and we wish you all the birdies that you can thank you. handle. Um, you and your mommy. I'm trying to get cars right now, but thank you. <laughs> I'll get them. And a couple coaches right I here know. whenever you guys get together. Get yes. a we are lifestyle coaches now as we transition. Um, <laughs> Mike, you know, um, thank you for doing what you do for, for Canada and continuing to represent our country in the game of golf. Um, we couldn't be more proud and we couldn't be more honored to even have you on the show. Yeah, I well, I would love to meet you guys in person someday. So I know Mike's got to run, but I wanted to thank you guys for including me on this and let's stay connected. For sure. Thank you Thanks, both. Ladies. Out driving with the queens on the green. Queens on the green.